we're going to cover some of the properties of transfer functions. Now this relates an input um, to an output and we call a transfer function g of s. So our input may be u of s and our output may be y of s. So in this case we're going to relate a single uh, input to a single uh, output with our transfer function and then also um, this is also going to be an algebraic okay, relation in the s domain. So a transfer function can also be written as y of s over u of s equals g of s. So if we have a particular u of s, that would just be multiplied over, and then y of s equals g of s times u of s. So this is what that uh, represents in terms of an algebraic expression. Um, we can also combine, or they can be combined to give a total system behavior. And we'll show that um, down here with some examples. Uh, they're also uh, convenient to be used with what are called block uh, diagrams. Okay, so if we have a controller, uh, this would be a uh, block diagram, for example, where you have a PID controller, you might have your, your system, and then your feedback control. Okay, so that would be a block diagram. They also require uh, the initial conditions to be zero, and uh, we need to use what are called deviation uh, variables. Okay, so deviation variables are required in this case. So let's go on down to our uh, additive property. Um, so this is for parallel processes. Okay, where we have uh, you know two inputs. Um, now this could be u1 of s and u2 of s. I've just labeled those as x1 and x2. Uh, but let's say we had y of s. Okay, so y of s is going to be in this case for the additive property that's just going to equal g1 of s, um, I'll put the s in there for the y as well, times uh, u1 of s plus g2 of s times u2 of s. Okay, so you can add uh, you know, signal one. Okay, and now this could be called, um, I'm gonna actually label this one x1, these intermediate um, terms here. Okay, so this could be called x1 of s, and this could be x2 of s. Okay, um, we also have a multiplicative property. Okay, so if we have these in series, um, then it is just going to be y of s. Okay, so y of s is going to equal a g2 of s times x2 of s. But then we also know that x2 of s is going to be equal to g1 of s times x1 of s. Okay, so if I plug that back in here, I can get rid of x2, my intermediate value, and I can have g1 of s times g2 of s times x1 of s. Okay, and these can also be uh, switched, you know, g2 can be listed before g1. So this is the multiplicative property, and that's for uh, these, these transfer functions in series. Okay, so um, we also know that, um, you know, so as if we have our transfer function g, if we plug in as s approaches zero, okay, um, then that means that this is, is going to be the gain. Okay, so that's going to be the gain is um, the result of the limit of g as s approaches zero. Okay, so if I put in at limit s goes to zero of g of s, that's going to equal the gain of our system. Okay, and for our FOPDT model, that would be case sub p. Okay, but that's only when, um, only when the limit exists. Okay, um, otherwise, you know, if you had infinity or something like that, it, um, you wouldn't be able to calculate the gain. <clears throat> okay, so let's just find the gain for the following transfer functions. Um, now in this case, if we plug in uh, limit s goes to zero, um, then uh, this is going to equal, it's just gonna equal one, okay? Because that went to zero. Now let's do it for the, the next one as well. You know, as this goes to zero and that goes to zero, that's going to equal a. And then this final one, as we plug in um, zero, and that's going to equal um, eight 
divided by 3 times 2, or 4 thirds. Okay, so that's one way to get the gain. Now the final value theorem for a signal, which is y of s equals g of s, u of s. Let's say we had a step like 1 over s here for our input u. Um, if we want to get the final value for our, our, our system, then we have to multiply by s. Okay, so s goes to 0, s times y of s. Okay, now we gave it a unit step here. So our gain is, um, this is going to be the y steady state value. Okay, but we know that we started at a value of 0. Um, and if we had a unit step change input, that is the definition of our gain. Okay, so we started at 0, went to 1 for a unit step. Um, and uh, so that's, that's the difference in the final value theorem between a signal y and a transfer function g, is that you need to multiply by s in order to get the steady state solution but that can also be used to find the gain as I saw back in in these examples. Okay, so that um, that concludes this brief tutorial on uh, transfer functions. Um, we're going to go into design different values of u of s. Uh, we'll put those through a transfer function g of s and then calculate a response y of s.